Welcome to the non-league show with myself, Ollie B. Due to the success of the last one, um, the gaffers let us carry on. And I'm delighted to be joined by Mr. Non-League, ex-professional footballer as well, Greg Young. How are we, mate? Hello, mate. How are you? I'm good, mate. I'm good, good mate. Good. I'm good, mate. We'd had a bit of a technical fault, didn't we? To... Did, yeah. <laughs> Typical you. I said to Tito before we come here, he used to come to our school. And he, oh, Ollie, oh, he won't do his own work. He'll get things wrong with your messed up list as well. So. Yeah, so just for context, <laughs> Young, he actually used to teach me, didn't you? I did, yeah. What do you reckon I was like at, at school? Yeah, not bad. Like I say, we were good in football. When yeah. we were trying to get into football, uh, I was constantly battling with your B-Tech teachers. saying yeah. They were saying, don't play him. He's not done his own work. He's not done this. His cat needs to catch up. They were like, oh, no, I think he'll be all right, and then go into it, Ollie, you get this done, otherwise you're not going to be able <laughs> yeah. to play. Yeah, I remember him always used to say, you, yourself always saying to me, come on now, you've got to crack down with your work, <laughs> just so I can play football. Yeah. Um, firstly, what I'm going to do is something a bit different, I'm going to show you a goal, um, actually, that was good, that was disallowed. Disallowed. Um, so I'm going to quickly show you, I'm going to see, because it, it, it really does bug me, they still to this day, I think it about two years ago as well, so I'm going to have, a, have your, little reaction, so your little reaction to this, Let's and see what you then. think. Let's have a look. I did see a few when you were playing for the school team, but they're better than this. Oh, there we are. Where are we? Oh, good well shot. Right oh, give me the ball away. <laughs> shot. Oh, oh, strike, son. I don't know what keeper's doing. Yeah, Middle of the goal, but a good strike. <laughs> <laughs> keeper's yeah. making you look good there. <laughs> no, I'm joking, mate. You're probably not wrong. Slow motion. Play. Right, Pegger. Middle at goal, I'll give you, I'll give you six, seven, seven, six, seven out of ten. Six, seven out of ten. To be fair, it. it's better than probably many, any goals I scored. Maybe. Oh, what's he doing, look? Yeah, what a nightmare! What a Hard disaster! Off offside. I'm not sure what it's for. Yeah, absolute disaster. I'll take a seven out of ten. Take it, do you score? I'll take a seven yeah, out of ten. Right, give but it yeah, it didn't count actually. That were a, it. Still <laughs> does bug me to this day. I'll be honest. That's, Mark, Mark sent me it today. He said. Um, I was buzzing to see it because I hadn't seen it in ages because they didn't let me put it out. But um, yeah, I've got to get it I'm out. Gonna, yeah, I'm going to get it out. Get, I'm going to wait see if you can get a better yeah. one now. So on to yourself. Yeah. Um, obviously, I want to quickly dive into obviously your your career. Obviously, starting at, at Chef Wednesday. But if we're diving in a bit early, don't explain because you used to play a bit of rugby, didn't you? At the start I of did. But my dad was a rugby player, so when I was like eight, nine, through to rugby club, I didn't really play football other than just maybe on street. Um, and then playing out uh, with my mates, they're going on oh, as a football trial at Bessica Boys, and they were a couple of years older than me because they were living on my street. And they went, oh, I just went, oh come on, I'll go along just for just because I had nothing to do. Played in this this trial game or this match and they were like we need we want you yeah. to play obviously I had a bit of ability very you know sporty anyway um, and I went home and told me mum I'm gonna play football she was delighted because she didn't want me to get hurt yeah. playing rugby my dad were a bit gutted at yeah. first I mean he likes football as well but um, so I, I knocked the uh, rugby on the head and started playing football some could say I play me football a little bit like rugby but uh, <laughs> so that's how it started so yeah. I played there Bessica boys uh, two years below above myself or below myself, and then play the year, and then I signed for Branson uh, with my mates yeah. from school. So I've, the last year of yeah. playing Sunday League, I wanted to play with my mates, and, and played with play with them, and had a good year with those. We had a really good team. Um, at that point, I was already signed by. I think by Rovers, right? Um, like I'd been part of the centre of excellence. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's slightly different when I was young. Though going back to yeah. a long way, <laughs> you were signed. You were signed by an academy or and what right. the centre of excellence, the club. But you also played Sunday league football up until right. under twelve. Now I know they have a middle yeah. sixes and stuff, don't they? Yeah, starting early. So yeah. obviously signing for for Wednesday. Yeah. From Rovers. Yeah. Am I right? Yeah. Yeah. So I got what was that like. Yeah. Yeah, it was good. I played for Donny Boys on a Saturday morning, right, which yeah. was massive. Then all the best players played the district you play against Sheffield boys, Leeds yeah, boys. Yeah. And I got actually people were laughing so me. I was actually playing up front, right. and the scout saw me and said his movement was brilliant. I don't think I scored, but my movement was good. Wanted to give me, yeah. wanted to sign me for Wednesday, and obviously being a chef, massive chef Wednesday yeah. fan, my dad is as well. I went, yeah, I'm going. So I went, went to Rovers as lot. I'm going to go on trial, and after the trial period, they wanted to sign me on the twelves, and because I'd already contracted to the centre of excellence yeah. here. At, at Rovers, they had to pay money for me. I was 12, wow. so I sat signed there at 12. Yeah, 12 year old. Brilliant. So obviously you had your time at Wednesday as well, but then obviously you moved on to Grimsby. Obviously, did you, did you signed a pro at Wednesday, were that right? Yeah. So I, I sat, from being 12, I did I did my YTS. So I got I got luckily I got signed as a YTS. I think yeah. I was saying to you before, I was lucky to get a YTS. Yeah. I, I think football isn't going to young. You go up and down. I was having a growth spurt. I yeah. technically wasn't very good. I was playing left back. 
and <laughs> on the ball. I'm not the best. I'm yeah. all right. I'm all right. Yeah. But playing at a top of the Premier League academy, yeah. I wasn't good enough. Right. Um, and I was probably I probably filled a quota. I probably oh we need an extra player to play. We need a player yeah. to play in the team. Got signed on. By the time I was under 18s, I'd, I'd moved to centre half and I'd found my feet and I'd probably found a position. Edit, kick it, boot it. <laughs> yeah. uh, and I was found something I was good at. I was much better. If I'd have stayed at left back, I'd have been released. Um, so I did well and and signed an extra year there. So I did three years full time yeah. at Sheffield right. Wednesday. Wow, I didn't know that. I didn't know you did that long there. So obviously. It didn't kind of work out at Wednesday, so obviously then you moved on to, to Grimsby. Yeah. Um, who were in the, was it the championship at the time? Yeah. What was so that experience like? Yeah, it was good. It was, I mean, I'd had the set down with the, the Wednesday, and I'd been there, I'd done three years, and I was doing well. I was playing yeah. the reserves regularly when others weren't. They'd sat down and released a load of young lads and told them at Christmas that they were going to get rid of them. I was one of the fortunate ones who pulled me and said, Yeah, we're going to keep you for next year, but obviously it was just a verbal conversation. Right, yeah. Got to the end of the season, and I don't know, it was one of those things in football. Um, no, you, you, we're not going to keep you now. Everyone else had had time to. Right. To sort something, I think they were. I, mean, I, I did have an agent at that time, so obviously yeah. playing, and he rang me up. Says, "Look, Grimsy, you've got one last reserve game. Go and play in it. See what you can do." And I, I went, and it was one of those games where I had an absolute world. Yeah. If I did it again, <laughs> I, I was lucky. It was just one of those ones where I, I remember picking it up the back and trying to play a crossfield ball, and it didn't go anywhere where I thought yeah. it was going to go. But it was anywhere. It looked yeah. like I meant it. Yeah. Pinged it, went straight to the lads, and I was like. Yeah. Oh, yeah. So I'm lucky today, so it's going shining on me. It's had a really good game, and they said come back to pre season. And uh, I again, a really good pre season, and managed to get my, that, that pro contract at, at Grimsby, who were also yeah. in the championship, which uh, was Division One, it was called, yeah. that one, essentially yeah, yeah. the championship. So, yeah. we obviously at this point you said you played striker as well. Is this the when you were nailed on at set, playing centre half? Yeah, yeah, I knew by that point. Yeah. I knew I knew my only chance of ever making yeah. it was kicking it, heading it. Being, I was like I kinda of like it was loud so everyone there, like, quite yeah. talkative. I'd, I'd found my position, I found comfortable with it. Playing at left back, left midfield, I kinda of knew I wasn't good enough and I was yeah, yeah. you know, I, I was I was never gonna make in that position. But centre half I could I was tall, I right. could I could leap, I was quite athletic yeah. as a centre half, so I say like a Rio Ferdinand type player at the time, although yeah. he's probably better on the ball than I was. Right. So somewhere in between Rio, <laughs> athletics and, and yeah. John Terry, I'm not comparing that. I love the yeah. B Tech level. One of those. Yeah. Uh, but that was my style, and yeah. and I yeah, found a bit of confidence and definitely nailed on centre half. Anywhere else, I wasn't good enough. <laughs> really? So obviously, I'm going to quickly a bit of a throwback for yourself, but. And I was told that I used to get the nickname Bambi. Bambi, yeah. Do you want to quickly explain about obviously why you got called that? Yeah, so my best mates all called me Bambi Knights, kind of stuck with those. <laughs> um, I was at, uh, so my first first probably week as a YTS, so my first leaving school 16, we're training, we're doing all the fitness training. And you have the ladders, don't you, where yeah, you yeah. run through the ladders. <laughs> and I'm obviously, by this time, my legs are starting to go a bit longer yeah. and I'm losing a bit of coordination. Yeah. And I'm up against some little whippet and he's <laughs> flying through, competitive, I'm trying to keep up with him. I've caught my feet in the ladder. I don't. I must have looked like flying everywhere, <laughs> arms, legs. The ladders come whipping over, I lay out, I'm chewing grass on the floor and everyone's, whoa, Bambi and Ice. And from that moment, yeah, it just, just stopped. Stuck. Everyone called me Bambi and Ice and everyone at Chef Wednesday at the time, we, is that uh, what you got it Wednesday? Yeah. yeah, Wednesday, and it kind of stuck. It stuck through there with my best mates. I did. I think I mentioned it. I sh kind of shook it off a little bit later <laughs> yeah, on. Yeah. So there's people are like, how on it? Where I shook it off? Yeah. It may have been like Grimsby Halifax, but later on, yeah. I shook it off and got, yeah. got youngy. Yeah, um, <laughs> it's a funny story. That because I'm off with ladders yeah. as well. A little um, like tiny feet in it. Tiny feet, ladders. quick feet. So I'm trying uh, to do it. Yeah, I'm off with that as well. Glute legs going everywhere. So moving on, obviously. Um, you're at Grimsby now, obviously, and then was it Halifax that you went to next? And obviously, you've had a spell at Halifax under Chris Wilder. Yeah, what was that like? It was brilliant. So I obviously made my, my debut at, at Grimsby. At Grimsby, I played in the Championship, played in League One, played in League Two. But then a new manager came in. Um, uh, to be fair, he won't fan having me. Out. <laughs> yeah. And that happens. Yeah. Yeah. Probably wasn't playing that well at the time. I went on loan to North, which while I was at Grimsby, who were in the Conference Premier. Yeah. Did really well. They wanted to sign me, and then obviously maybe they've seen me play well. I've seen me at Grimsby and Chris. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Said he wanted to sign me, um, and I went along, and we had a good young team. 
so I went there and, and signed for Halifax and absolutely loved it there. Yeah. Absolutely been a really successful team, a young team mixed with a couple of older players um, and he was a top, top manager. Murray. Yeah, he was good. He, he had the balance between giving you a bollocking when you needed a bollocking and he could yeah. give them out and he'd yeah. let you know if you were doing, doing it right but he'd also have the arm around the yeah. shoulder, brilliant man manager and also he was the one that did a lot of coaching yeah. as well so he was a good coach along with the, the management side of it. Um, did I think he would make it yeah. to the Premier League? Probably, maybe not, I don't know, because it was quite a way off at that yeah. point for him. But Because he's worked his way up yeah. through a couple of non-leagues, like, and, but I knew he was going to go on to better things and certainly managing the Football League. Would you say he's one of the, well, would you say he's the best manager you've played under? I, yeah, I think all around I would. Would you? Yeah, especially at the time, because I was 23, 24 and I was finding my feet and obviously still mm. learning the game. So he, at that time particularly, obviously I, I took on board a lot. He was saying he had probably had a big impact on the way I yeah. saw the game and how I played the game, how to train, how to be the best. Uh, and also that on the coaching side, I've done a bit of coaching yeah. now and, and when I'm talking to younger players, yeah. I'll often use some of the phrases, that, some, of the, yeah. some of the points that he says. So I've obviously took on board a lot that he said to me um, and it stuck with me, some of the stuff he, he said and it was obviously a while ago now. Brilliant. So obviously moving on as well from from Halifax, you had long spells at Altrincham and, and Buxton. I think overall for both clubs, you made over th was it 300 appearances for both. What was it obviously them spells like at, at them two clubs because you were there that long? I mean, I, I absolutely loved Alty. So my, my time at Halifax, I mean, I think I played like 60, 70 games, maybe more, and I should have played a lot more. I was there three years, but wow. I did my in that time. I was full time, still a full. They full were still time. a full time club. So right. from leaving school at 16 to being like 23, 24, maybe even 25. I'd, I'd only trained full time, but I'd done my ACL. I was out yeah. nine months my ACL. We played in the player final at Halifax, and we we nearly we nearly got promoted back to the football league. Dislocated my shoulder, was out time with that. So I, I'd struggled with injury a little bit at Halifax, but I absolutely loved it there. But I think maybe because I'd missed so many games, it kind of came to a point where I had to move on a little bit. Right. Um, so Alton came in, and they were in the same league, so they were in the Conference Premier but they were part-time. Right. So for me, it was a massive shift. But I'd always been a professional footballer. I'd done yeah. it as my only job. Um, I had the, the injury in my knee and Alty came in and said, look, we're coming, come in for me. We're trying to stay up. They were near the bottom of the league. Right. They were like just trying to survive. So Halifax, we were up near the top. Yeah, yeah. Alty were down near the bottom and I went in and absolutely loved it. The set of lads were fantastic. A manager called Graeme Heathcote was proper Old, yeah, old school. So Real different to Wilder. Yeah. Proper man, can he be like, yeah. oh, you old dickhead, oh, and all that, yeah. and, he shan't. <laughs> and he, he old school manager, but yeah. it was part time. And it was a little adjustment. That was the first time I'd gone part time. And it was a case of, right, if I'm going part time, what am I going to do? Yeah, well, I, so how did you obviously adjust to that knowing? Because it's a big difference from going full time to part time. You've obviously got to think about what you're going to do. It is. What I mean, that? I was lucky that the money, because the money he offered me was good. Good money, yeah. It was good money for part time. So it allowed me to then go to uni. So I thought, do you know what? Football is, it is a fragile industry. You can be in it and out of it sooner yeah. than you're in it. You know what I'm so quickly? And I'd done my ACL and it was potentially a career ending injury. So I went to uni. I thought, you know what I mean? I'm not any good with my hands or anything like that. Yeah. So I thought I'd go to uni, did my uni while I was playing at Altrincham. So I didn't have another job. Yeah. I just did, um, did a bit of time at Altrincham. But to be honest with you, I think out of my non league career, Apart from that one year at Halifax where we got to play a final, yeah. I, was, I was flying in that season, but the three years at Altrincham was the most consistent three years. Most enjoyable years. Enjoyable, yeah, because I was playing so well and I was, a, I was a key member of the team. So I, where at Halifax I was a key member, but maybe not one of the top, where I was kind of like a little bit of a captain. Yeah. You know, at first yeah. three, it's a bit like captain of the club. I was kind of like, and my confidence was flying. I probably played consistently in the National Cup League, consistently well without getting injured as well. So I had yeah. three years without getting injured. Played really, really well. And I, I loved it. I loved the club. I loved um, going back there to the club yeah. and the, the fans. So I went back there recently with testimony. It was like I'd not been, I've not been there for 10 years, but it was like I'd never been away. So the club itself were, were fantastic. Brilliant. So obviously then moving, was it Buxton you went to next? No, I, well, because I've done so well at Altrincham, I had, I had some interest. Right. So I, I'd, I'd been doing well. I'd, um, I had a couple of clubs looking at me. I had um, Darlow, I had uh, York, who I eventually signed yeah, for. Yeah. And again, they were full time and they were close to home. So Altrincham was great. They offered me another contract. 
but your temptation of going back to a club that were near home, was st- right. near home, close to home, didn't have to travel two and a half hours on an evening, and it was full time, as much as I'd enjoyed the part time, it was a chance to go back and be full time footballer again um, and play a team that was, again, we were always up towards the towards bottom the end of the city, yeah. towards the top. So I went to York. Uh, it didn't quite work out as I should have done. I got, again, I got injured. Yeah. I'd had three years old in not getting injured. Yeah. And then went to pre-season at York. I mean, I'd my foot, I'd been knackered of my foot and yeah. I missed the beginning of the season. It just set me back a little bit. And it was all right, it was quite good. Yeah. The manager got sacked who brought me in at Christmas. Um, did that affect it much then? I mean, it, well, the, yeah, it did a little bit. So Gary Mills came in and he, he, he probably didn't play me as much as the other manager had done. Um, so I was on the bench quite a bit, coming off the bench, and then I, I could have I could have signed for Darlow at the time. They wanted to sign me, but he wouldn't let me go because he, he knew that he needed me for kind of like yeah. cover or playing. You know, or like essentially, I was third choice centre half there, um, and that's when I kind of just did a year there and, and ended up leaving. Wow. So obviously, now moving on to your time at Buxton, where would you say you made the most appearances at Buxton? Yeah. So I, went, I, went, I mean, I had a two-year spell at Gainsborough as well after. After your, oh no, I went to I went to Alfreton. I've had that many clubs, mate. Yeah. So I did. I did another year. I, I, uh, I signed a two-year contract to Alfreton from York, and again they would just been promoted to the Conference Premier. Right. So it's like I had. I could have gone to Hall, uh, Harrogate, but I went to Alt. Uh, I went to. Um, Alfred, Alfred yeah. because they'd been promoted. I knew Nicky Law, who was a manager. Oh, yeah. He was the one who played me quite a bit when I was at Grimsby. Uh, he was the end, the end one that I ended yeah. up falling out with. Actually, he's, really? Oh, he's nuts. He was nuts. Again, right. he was an old school centre, uh, old school player. Yeah. By, but he's shy. He'd call you every name under the sun. Is that why he fell out then? Just because yeah. of his demeanour? Oh my God! We were playing away at. Um, I was captain, club yeah. captain. We were playing playing number of games there. Yeah. But we were playing. A, there was a couple of things we played. It, Way at Gateshead, and then was being to Gateshead. It's yeah. an athletic track, yeah. so it's quite. You can the crowds there, quite big yeah. crowds, but it's, it's you, you can hear everything on the pitch because yeah, it's yeah. too far away. And he's going, Yangy, Yangy, yeah. do this, do that, tell him that, <laughs> get it. Cop me, yeah. can I get him into yeah. it? I'm like, I just, I, I had enough of it. We're nil yeah, nil at yeah, the time. Yeah. I turn around, he's like, off. Yeah. Go and he went, get him off. Get he drag you. He, tra- he tried to drag me, but the assistant manager was like, "You can't take him off. You can't. We'll, we'll draw in nil yeah. nil. Keep him on." So he kept me on. I think we ended up losing the game. I think he was right. We were struggling. Yeah. We were about to concede. We did concede. Anyway, he tore into me after the game. You speak to me like that again? Oh my! Tried to apologise to him, and he just wasn't having any of it. Really. But to be fair, he still kept playing me. So the next three or four games, I did play, and then we played Fleetwood. Away. Right. This is about this is about three, two or three weeks later. And Fleetwood at the top of the league. Yeah. If you know Fleetwood, they had uh, Vardy. Is um, this when they had Vardy? Vardy played. So Vardy played left of a free, right of a free. No, right of a free. Yeah. They had uh, Seddon. Do you know that? Oh yeah, yeah, Seddon, yeah, yeah. He did those. He was at Salford. Salford. He, Salford. Yeah, yeah, he yeah. was up down the middle. And the other side was a guy called Mangum, who ended up who's played in football league. Forest Green. He's like wow. played football. So their front three were class. Course, we had a yeah. back four. They were all centre halves. I right. was playing left back. <laughs> right. Directly up against Vardy. <laughs> so he's, to be fair, he didn't score, right. and I did do all right against him. But we, they were a better team than us. Yeah, they were yeah. at the top at table. We were at the bottom. It was actually a game where Vardy put in his book where they were passing the pound coin. Do you know in the game? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So whoever had the pound coin at the end of the game had to do some kind of forfeit or pay some things. And I'm like, what's going on here? They're all passing the pound. You couldn't. You couldn't reject it, but you had to pass it around. I'm thinking they're taking the piss out of us here. They're playing. Well, they were just passing the While they were pound. playing, so it was a pound coin, they were putting it in the socks, they were holding it. At the end of the whistle, at the end of the 90 minutes, yeah. whoever had the pound coin had to do some mad forfeit and had to pay like 200, 300 quid or something. It's in wow. his book. And it was in his, it was in that game, and I'm thinking they're taking the piss out of us. They're beating us 3 0, <laughs> yeah. and they're passing this coin around during wow. the game. That's, that's mad. I know. And it, it's so, Could you see him doing it as well? Yeah, we see him doing it, and they, <laughs> someone got injured, and you weren't allowed to reject it. So if someone gave you it, you had to take it. Yeah. 
So it's, he had met, someone got injured and physio had come on to the physio and someone's gone, there you go, to physio. <laughs> so physio had to then go off the pitch. He's desperate, waiting for someone to get injured again so we can get back on the pitch to give it to someone else. And he did. I can't remember who ended up with it. Wow. But one of their players ended up with it. But at the end of that game, we'd, we'd lost. And we, to be fair, we'd done all right. We'd, yeah. they, they were better than us. We were at bottom. And he, on the Monday morning, again, it was full time. It had gone back. We were still a full time club at the time. Monday morning, he just ran us. He yeah. just, oh my God, the hardest <laughs> session you've ever done. It was like boot camp, an yeah. army boot camp. We had this old Scottish guy who was physio. Yeah. And he was bru He was like an army guy. He was like, get down, get more, Bertie. And we're like, ridiculous. So we yeah. just played, we just had a run around on Saturday against Vardy and Co. And then on the Monday morning, we're doing burpees, sprints. Oh my God. And I was getting a bit older by yeah. this point. How old did you say you are at this point then? Uh, uh, I must be 30, 29, 29, right, 30. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so we'd had the run around, done this mad run in, and that was on the Monday. On the Tuesday, we played here at Cantley Park in Donny, we played um, a friendly game. Right. So I played within 10 minutes, like, and then running around, I'm like, I can feel my hamstring tight, and yeah. the ball went over the top, pulled my hamstring. So I've gone into to seat physio, and you want to physio? Yeah, you've done you've done your ammo. So obviously I go in, and I'm yeah. sl I'm going mad because I'm going why the f why are we running? Why, why are we running on a Monday yeah. and then playing on the thing? Well, like if we were if we we were crap and we deserve to run, and we didn't put effort in. Fair enough, but he yeah. ran as ran as I pulled my hamstring, so I'm slagging him off to yeah. the physio. Do you reckon he got back to him? It then? did. It definitely got yeah. back to him. So that was it. Then he yeah. called me in and says, yeah. I said, well, yeah, because you why why are you running us on a Monday when they, they just they were just better than us. Yeah. You know, give us some coaching to yeah. make us better rather than just yeah. running us. And that, after I said that to him, that was it. That was it. Relationship yeah, done. Yeah, it won. You know, I wasn't one to argue with managers and stuff, but at that point, it kind of gone. Wow. So I left Alfton and went to Gainsborough. I had a year left on my contract to Alfton as well, and I, I refused to. Like, I was like, no, I'm not, I'm no, not staying there. Do you reckon he did just sat you on the uh, like, just He said to me, he ran me up pre-season, and he said, um, you're not going to play, you're not going to do that, you might as well go. And I said, well, give me my money and I'll go. Yeah. And he won't give me I says, well, I'll stay there. Uh, and I was on good money at the time, I remember they were, they were full time. Alfred were full time? Uh, yeah, really? so at this point, they, well, we were doing th we were three, th three days, so Monday morning, Mondays, Tuesdays, and Thursdays, Fridays, we didn't train. Right. Um, and I says, no, I'm not, I'm not going anywhere. Cause I had a f Altrincham came back in for me, but they were part time and miles away. Yeah. And yeah. they were offering me half the money. I said, well, I'm not going to go for half the money. Yeah. And, and in the end, Gainsborough came in for me, and it was when they were. They were throwing a bit of cash about. Yeah. It was um, the guy who's now just left Scunny, Peter Swan. Oh, Peter Swan, yeah, yeah. Yeah, and so he he was the old, old Wilco's, and he I went, do you know what? Yeah, I'd had a couple of good things, heard good things about it. Yeah. Um, my, my mate played there, so I ended up going to to Gainsborough in the Conference North. Enjoy it there. I, do you know what I did? Yeah, yeah. I did. Steve Ausham was manager and top man Ausham, so mm. he completely different to Nicky Law. So we talk about managers you've yeah. managed, and obviously Chris Wilder yeah. being probably the top here and yeah. then having the balance between both and, and being a good yeah. coach. You had Nicky Lowe didn't coach at <laughs> yeah. all hardly but he was quite he was alright my mate shout yeah, the ball yeah, old yeah. school and then House who did a bit of coaching but he would say he wanted the bright he wanted, he won't mind me saying this yeah. he wanted the brightest yeah. if he, some of his team talks were brilliant like yeah. Right lads, if we uh, if we score more than them today, we'll win the game. And it, like you're thinking, is he being serious yeah. here or not? Yeah. And then we played uh, Harrogate one time, and Nick, um, what's the Weaver is the yeah, manager, yeah. isn't he? Yeah. And he's like articulate. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Does all his plannings, all his set pieces. He'll have watched all the videos. You in there? He'll have watched all the videos yeah. on you. He'll know everything, all the set pieces. He'll have watched it. He stayed up last night analysing all the yeah. games. The only thing I was analysing last night, only video I was Debbie does Dallas. Yeah. Uh, I mean, yeah. He was, but he, but he was class. But what he did do, he, you'd want to you'd want to play for him. Yeah. He was a you top, want to win for him. You yeah. want to win for him because he was a top bloke and top man and we had a we had a good season that first year and then Swanee left and pulled all the money and the squad just left. So people like um Luke Warfall. Yeah, yeah. Who's Is now he at Grimsby? Grimsby. Yeah, yeah. So just got promoted captain yeah. at Grimsby. He was centre half. He, wow. he he got a move. A lad called Terry Orchard who went on got a couple of moves. We had yeah, a really good team. Yeah. Don Roma played, who's played really good non we had a good team but it kind of disbanded and the money went and I but I stayed for another year. Right. Um, and and to be honest with you, I'd, at that point I'd lost the love of game. I'd lost the love yeah. a little bit. 
I can't. I don't know. I don't know what it was. I probably weren't playing very well. Yeah. That last year, I kind of. We struggled. Games were struggling like that year. That second year, we we didn't. We weren't near the bottom, but we were like 14th, 15th, right, just yeah. below mid table. Game. I was going to games and not enjoying playing. I particularly weren't playing particularly well at that point. And I, to be honest with you, I thought, Do you know what? I'm not sure. I was not 31, 32, and I thought, ah, I'm not yeah. sure. I'm I'm kind of done. Uh, might be me done, and I, I, I left. I, I, I'd, I'd say I'd not really played lot well, and then that's when Buxton yeah. came in, and Tim Ryan, the local Donny, Donny, Donny lad, he ran me up. At York said, now, yeah, 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 York now as a coach. Obviously played at Rovers all the time. Yeah. He ran me up, and says, "Do you want to play?" We've got Martin McIntosh was the manager who I've got an absolute fantastic relationship. Well, another yeah. top manager, uh, and said, "Come, come and play." And do you know what? The best thing I did over playing over there again, a club that I love, love playing for. It kind of reinvigorated me yeah. uh, and my enthusiasm for the for the game and playing. You spent a lot of time there, didn't you? Did yeah. So I think I, I remember when I left and it, they wanted to keep me. But I'll get to that in a bit. But I think I was close to just just I think it was about three or four short of two hundred yeah. appearances. Uh, club captain for most of that. I think the f I think five years. So maybe the first year I wasn't, and after that I was club captain. Uh, and we had some really successful teams, really good lads yeah. as well. We had a, a massive Donny base. Yeah, so yeah. Tim had got a lot of Donny lads in, yeah, and yeah. a lot of lads from Sheffield. So we'd all jump in the cars and like the banter and yeah. the change room. Probably the changing room was as good as change room has had. Maybe Halifax and maybe Alty, but probably the, just the togetherness and the changing room was was, was classic Buxton. Brilliant. So obviously I know you've um, there's, there's multiple clubs like your time at Frickley yeah, and, yeah. and stuff like that. But obviously now 39 years of age, am I right? Yeah. 39, 39 still, still going. going, old man. So obviously now at Rosington, you had a very good uh, season last season getting the playoffs. Do you want to quickly explain about um, last season, obviously, because no one predicted, I think, Rosington to be in, in the top five in and around the yeah. promotion push. Do you want to quickly explain about your, your role last season? Yeah, so club? Ben Ben Hunter, the manager, ran me up and again, like I said, I probably got to 38 and I was, this, my shoulder had been done and I said, am I going to play? I'm not sure. And he come, said, come to Rosel. And I was like, yeah. oh, I'm not sure. Yeah. I, I'll be honest, at the point, I was like, I'm not sure if I want to play. I, you know, yeah. play that, do I want to play that low? I play always. But do you know what? He, he come. He said, "Look, we're having it. We're, we're developing something here at Rosington. I want you to be a big part of it. We've got a really good young squad. Yeah. Come along and be a key like player to, yeah. to you know, help these younger players." I went, "Do you know what? Let's do it." Let's and it was it, it, it was really really positive. I again, like I said, absolutely enjoyed it. And it's you know, I'm, I'm glad that um, I took the opportunity to go and play. Um, I say we had a really good season. Yeah. We internally knew we had a good team. We didn't want to shout from the rooftop say About we're going to do yeah. this and do that. We knew our target all season was to get in the playoffs. Yeah. Um, and we did do that. We, there was a bit where we were umming and ahhing, but we put a really good run on towards the end of the season. And yeah. To be fair, we, we fell short in the playoff semi final. We played Ferriby, who were paying a lot more money, had some really big players. Had uh, Brad Grayson not that. got sent off. You never know. We you're were on top as well. We, we were on top. top. We, he'd, he'd, he'd nearly scored, so a ball went over the top, yeah. and he, the keeper came rushing out, and he lobbed it over him, and he missed. He missed the goal by inches. Yeah. You think, oh god, we can hurt him in behind here. So another ball went over the top. The keeper came rushing out again this time, yeah. and keeper got there like a split it's second before Brad put his foot up. It was controversial. Controversial. It's one of them where the striker, you know, the game. Got to go, go for, for it. it. If yeah. he's not going for it, I'm saying, Brad. Yeah, what you're are having you having a go at him. And he sent him off, and from there, we conceded about five minutes after that. Yeah. Killed us. You're up against it, aren't you, away at Ferriby? Yeah, obviously big down crowd, ten. they're a good team, ten men. So did they end up going up in the end of the day? They? Yeah, they went up. I was glad they went up in the end because they're a big team, and it gets us out the, gets them out of the league for next season, and probably maybe enhances our chances a little bit more for next season. Had they still been in, they would have been massive favourites this Definitely. season to go up. So obviously, you've, you've stuck around for another year. Retain for another year? Yeah, so I'll give it another go. I'll be 40 yeah. by the end of the season, yeah. so <laughs> uh, I thought, do you know what? I want to make it to 40. That's like yeah. a milestone that not many players, I know it's low, but yeah. not many people get the, the opportunity to do. And I say I've enjoyed it as well, and we're going to give it a good go. I mean, the club itself is, is, is progressing massively off, off the pitch. Yeah. Um, and hopefully that has an impact on the pitch as well. Uh, we, can, we, can, we can go one better next season. And um, you know, certainly, well, we wanted 100% playoffs. If not winning the league, there's no reason why we can't. I know 
sometimes you say, well, it's people fear saying we're yeah. going to win it. Well, there's no reason why we can't. Yeah. I know there's some, some really good teams in, in that league. It's going to be super, super difficult. There's three or four, it may be even five or six, but we're in, in, that, in that mix, I believe, for next season. Uh, so you scored a few this year, haven't you? I have. I scored a few last season. I think I got five or six goals, but to be honest, it should have been more. Those yeah. that uh, I play with and, and the manager will say that I should have had t probably ten or twelve. Yeah. I got. I mean, every game I think, apart from that one, I got on the end of the set piece yeah. and either went off target or the keeper saved mainly off target. Yeah. So I've seen a couple of my headers where I've crashed it, and I should do that more often. Um, I think as a player, you've always got to improve, even at yeah. thirty-nine. One thing I'm going to set myself next season is I scored five or six, but I think I can go score more than that yeah. based on the, the, the getting on the end of the runs. I've got to definitely. I'm going to. I'm going to go for ten. I'm going to. Ten, I'm going to stick my neck out. Yeah. Right. I'm going to stick my neck out there yeah. and get ten. Try and go for ten goals next season, which I think, based on last season and the, the way I was attacking the ball, is achievable as long as I try and get it on target. <laughs> so, if you got a bold prediction for next year, do you think you're going to be up and around it? Definitely, yeah, I think we'll be up there. Like I say, we've recruited well with Ross. Yeah. Um, we've got a couple of the young players who have in trial at the moment who look exciting. Um, we've got the black blend of experience. We've retained some some of the good players from this season who I think you know potentially could have yeah. gone, but the, uh, Ben's managed to, to keep hold of them because there's a it's a project there at Rosington where they yeah. definitely definitely want to go forward off the pitch. Like I say, it, it's happening, um, and I think some of that I'm excited to be a part of. You know, as a as a player and, and, and an experienced player, and I can maybe help help the club go forward. Brilliant. So now we're going to go on to, to some topics. So, so we've been through your, your career, the clubs you've been at, some yeah. these, some stories. Um, so we've got some topics. Obviously, I'm going to I'm going to overlay a photo here of your, your haircut. Um, was it 0304? Was it? Well, there's a few years. 0304. I think 506 was dodgy. I think I went for the cornrows at one point, yeah. which that was. But there's no photo evidence of that one. There's one I've seen that your hair straightened down to about here. I think it's, it's definitely at Grimsby. Am I yeah. right? And it's straightened down to it. It's so properly straight and down to about oh, yeah. I used to start having a big curly wig normally. I used to sit with the straighteners. I used to have the uh, the diamond earrings yeah. in both ears. I had the dodgy like tash. I used to have a bit of tan. Little thing that I was telling what looking back on the photos now you think, wow, what was I doing? Dodgy, dodgy photo. Uh, I, I couldn't believe it when I saw it. I thought, Young, you surely hadn't gone for that sort of haircut. But then again, Do you know what? I'm, I'm, I'm going to say it was in fashion, but yeah. I'm not sure it was. Yeah. There was. There was certainly a period where you had the mullet as well. Yeah. So Straightening the mullet. Yeah. Um, <laughs> definitely. I, you look back at the photos, you think, wow. I remember one year it rained yeah, yeah. doing the photo shoot, my hair straight, and then it started all going frizzy and curly. I'm like, oh my god, quick, it's horrendous. I think the one at all when I was at Ultron, we've got all gaps in it, it's terrible. <laughs> right, next one. Gaza story. Yeah. Do you want to quickly explain about this? I, I don't know actually anything about this, but I've been told to ask you about yeah, it. Yeah, Gaza, he's, we were, it was when I was at Chef Wednesday, so we were yeah. playing in the reserves yeah. and um, we were playing Everton, so he was at Everton at the time. And you look at the team sheet and you're like, oh, Gaza's playing. Yeah. So, obviously, I grew up watching your and I six, your Italian uh, yeah. 90, a hero, a legend, you think, wow. And then you realise while you're playing, you're playing, he's playing second mid, he's got obviously unbelievable yeah. ability. But he's pissed. Yeah, he's pissed. <laughs> so he's probably been on a night, dodgy, yeah, yeah. Uh, the night before. He's probably had about 10, 15 pints, some vodka, and a dodgy, <laughs> dodgy kebab. So yeah. he's playing the game and he's still running it. Yeah, yeah. Anyway, get a corner comes. They've got a corner and he's stood on the edge of the box. I'm gonna try and do it. Goes, ah, I need a fart. I need a fart. <laughs> and he, he farts. Yeah. And then he goes, shit. I followed through. I no. followed through. The corner comes in, you all you see is Gaza holding his holding his pants and no. he, just, he just runs off. <laughs> he just runs off the pitch. We're like, what is he doing? He's he's gone. He's gone off the pitch and the game carries on for about five, ten minutes, they're down to ten men, which is helpful for us because I think we're getting battered. Uh, and then he comes back on and he's got do you know like they put food on in plate yeah, yeah, yeah. so he's got in one hand like a cake the other hand he's got this sandwich and he's getting the ball and he's eating them <laughs> in this cake while he's yeah. playing i told i remember when i was at grimsby a bit later on and i said to yeah, yeah. this lad who i traveled in with called andy pettinger who was a goalkeeper and i thought he went oh i was i was on i played for everton that day i was like he was on the bench for everton yeah, yeah. so the kit man was going nuts because he'd obviously come in yeah, to yeah. the 
to the changing rooms, he'd flicked his pants and flicked them up and hit the ceiling. They were like, and he said there was like skid marks all on the ceiling where he shit being and all these dirty, pa shitty pants that the kit man was having to like pick up and stuff. So yeah, it's a funny, funny story. I mean, to play against Gaz yeah. was unbelievable, really. I mean, I know he was pissed at the time. All they've probably dodged his yeah. bats, made him shit and running about. That's brilliant. Yeah. I, 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 he never told me about that. He just said, "Ask Youngie about the Gaza story." Yeah. That's all I got told. Ask Youngie about the Gaza story. That's, that's brilliant. Um, on to the next one. Yeah. Bit of a difficult one because I yeah. know that you've, you've, you've um, how long have you been playing now? You say twenty something this years. This is. I worked out the other day because I was doing pre-season. I, I thought, do you know what? How many pre-seasons yeah. have I done? This is something from leaving school at sixteen and be going full time. This is my twenty-fourth season. Wow. Like as a as a footballer, obviously the first few years as a YTS and stuff. So. But yeah, 20, this is my 24th season in, in football, so. Brilliant. Plenty of years. This will be an hard question, this, but who would you say we're going to go through the best yeah. keeper, best defender, best midfielder, and best striker yeah. you've played with? So, do you want to start with the keeper? Who would you yeah. say is the best keeper that you felt, that would say that you felt comfortable in the sticks? I'm going to go, I'm going to go non league. There's yeah, a couple yeah. of keepers who are in the league, but I'm going to go non league. Best keeper, there's, there's a couple. Um, one was at York called Mike Lingham, played for Northern Ireland. Uh, tall, yeah. clutch things, good with his feet. Um, I didn't play with him as often. Uh, maybe it's like I said, we yeah. were playing at York. Another one, uh, a lad called Stuart Coburn. So with any old, yeah. old, old fans over in Matt, he's an absolute legend there. Yeah. He couldn't kick the ball. Yeah. You ask him to do a goal kick, he like curly toe, <laughs> banana foot, and he couldn't, couldn't kick yeah, it. Yeah. But his shot stopping was unbelievable. unbelievable. Like his reaction time, boom, and he, en he ended up playing until like, he was like 38, 39 or something. Uh, he, he was brilliant, and he was a great guy as well to play behind. Yeah, you, know? yeah, yeah. You, you always knew he was comfortable. He wasn't the tallest, so like Ingy was massive and tall punch. He wasn't the tallest, but his shot stopping was out, outstanding. Wow. Defend, uh, defender. So we'll say we're defender. So obviously it could be someone that you've obviously been next to in a back in a centre half yeah. partnership, or you can maybe go for a full back as well. I'm going to go the centre half who I played with, and I played with him at. I grew up with him at Chef Wednesday. Yeah. I played with him at Halifax and Alfreton and that season where we were at Halifax getting into the playoffs yeah. and had that really good season, me and him, our partnership was perfect, his name's Adam Quinn, right. he, was a, he was different to me, I was, oh, we were both good in the air, right. he was, he was, he, he would have played football league had yeah. he not been as slow, yeah. so he was quite a bit, he wasn't, Bulky, a bit yeah. bulk. He wasn't the quickest but yeah. he'd attack the ball, he'd, he'd, uh, he'd come around, he was, he was comfortable on the ball, yeah. you know, I was a big lad. He was unbelievable on the ball, and we worked well where he'd, I, I knew all the time he'd attack it, I'd cover around, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'd have quite good legs at that point, people say I'm slow, I'm not, <laughs> um, I, I'm not, <laughs> uh, so I'd cover around and we just had that understanding, yeah. and not only that, he was probably one of my better mates, best mates at the time, and st st still, you know, still speak to him now, and he was the best player. Fullbacks, uh, Jamie Green at Rosso, played yeah, at yeah. Buxton's good, good player. Is he still uh, playing at Rosso now then? Yeah, he yeah. is, yeah, so he's a good, good experienced player. Um, we had um, a guy called James Meredith at York again, who was really good. And another one, a guy called Matt Dowerty, who played in the league and also played at Halifax. He was part of that back four actually at Halifax. Did he play, did he play at Grimsby? Well. Did, he, did he know? No, he I played, thought, no, no, it might have been now. He, he became, he became Ultrium manager at one point. Uh, he, so he was part of the left back, me, centre half, and then Adam Quinn. He, you all got was, announced together, did you, at Halifax? I, no, we travelled over. Right. So every day we travel over. We had a, like, again because Chris Wilder was from Sheffield. Yeah. yeah he yeah. got a lot of lads over from Sheffield, so we had like a Wednesday. So travel, yeah, yeah. We were like Steve Asler and Adam Quinn. There was a load of us. There was about three, two or three cars yeah. used to meet up and all, all travel over every day, which was which was good. But he, he was a Manchester-based lad, and I played with him at Altingham and Halifax, and he he solid solid player. Right. So midfield. So he could be a, a centre mid, or we'll go. To, we'll say. It. With, uh, out wide as well, play yeah, that way out wide. Yeah, so, midfield, we had, do you know, I'm, you know, I'm going to start, I'm going to start from more recent, I wish we had some good, I'm going to go that yeah. way, uh, Bailey, really? who's now at Rovers, he's up there, he's a really good player, whether he's the best, that's not yet, yeah. you know, he's your Still, mate, yeah, yeah, he's yeah. got a lot to learn, but he's at the right path, yeah, yeah. you know, he's got the all attributes, and I hope he goes on and does well, whether that's in the football league, or whether it's higher non-league, he's got a really good chance, he's got the right attitude, um, but there's different players, and I, 
you know, yeah, I like my old school. You, I like the balance of having an old ratter in there. There was yeah, lads yeah. at auction, uh, the captain called Robbie Lawton, oh, yeah. Scouser, you know, horrible like yeah. scout. You know, you get those yeah. lads. We when we were um, old, we had a mix of like Yorkshire Scousers and Manx, yeah, yeah, yeah. and they were like the horrible, you know, <laughs> yeah. playing Scousers, horrible Scouser, yeah, yeah, yeah. scowling and, yeah. and and spitting it like yeah. not spitting, but yeah, 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 yeah. and you need that, and it intimidated teams. He was he was good at doing that. Um, trying to think, ball playing midfield. Uh, a lad called Andre Bucard, uh, who I played with at York, skill wise was unreal. Really? He's one of those that played with the ball on the top of his foot. Do you know how like yeah, he rolled yeah, the ball yeah. and he just, the mat, he loved the Megs. So if anyone, you know, he'd, he'd wait, he'd deliberately yeah, do yeah. it, come in and then put it through put people's it through legs, legs all the time. And then another lad at Micklover, oh God, what's his name called? He played, for, he played in the Premier League for Swansea. Dutch lad, um, he, he, his skill was unreal. I swatched it. Uh, played quite recent for Swansea. Yeah, uh, uh, no, he played about oh, he uh, made about six oh seven in the Premier League. Yeah. But he came to Micklover. Oh my God, I will have to remember his name. But he scored an unbelievable goal. Yeah. One of the best I've seen. He like he went to kick it over there. Yeah. It, everyone thinks he's. I think like, what's he doing? <laughs> he's kicking the ball out yeah. of play, and he like scooped it, flicked it, hit like looped it back, and the lad scored a back post. It was unbelievable. Technically, one of the best. Technically, on the best. He scored, I was watching his goal on uh, Twitter the other day, he put it, he retweeted it, yeah. and he went, he's like, chopped someone, sent someone for an absolute pie, done the, you know, the, the old flip <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. and then just slapped, slipped it under the keeper, he, he was unbelievable. There's probably loads I'm missing, yeah, yeah. do you know what I mean, you put, there's probably loads. I mean, 20 odd years, do you know what I mean? It, it is, I'll be, I'll, be, I'll be thinking about this, I have to think, oh, I forgot about him, yeah. like, I forgot about Jan, goalkeeper, he'll, he'll kill me if I don't mention yeah, yeah, Jan, yeah. <laughs> he was big class as well. Yeah, is, he, is, is Jan a similar age to yourself? He's, yeah, he's a couple of years older than is me. He? So we played at uh, Buxton first of all. Tim yeah. Ryan brought him in. So he's like, cl cl shot, cl yeah, yeah. massive, and he big long arms, yeah, yeah, yeah. clutch everything. He still lives on his, uh, still lives off his penalty save. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I see him retweeted all yeah, time. Villa and Man City and all them like cup. He lives off that still, but class keeper. Um, right. So last one. Yeah. Forward. One of my good mates, Chrissy Senior, who's a little diminutive striker but yeah. rapid, played on the shoulder. Um, he was at Altrincham, Halifax as well, uh, and Alfreton. So I yeah. played with him at three clubs. Um, the striker called John Grant at, at Halifax, who was a target man. Again, yeah. he'd link it up, but also scored. Um, let me think. I tell you, Stuart Bevan at Micklover. I'm obviously I can remember the more recent ones. Yeah. He's a lad that's played. Um, in the league, and you could see it. He played yeah. there, and he's again technically unbelievable. You get an, 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 actually another one I just thought of. He will, he'll be uh, thankful I've mentioned him, Liam Hardy. Oh, yeah. You know, like Donny, yeah. another Donny lad. Where's he at now? He is at Workshop. Yeah, works up. Goals. Played against yourself, didn't he? Last yeah, year? yeah, yeah. One of them where yeah, he's playing against me. No, I kicked yeah. him. He knows how I play, but he scored. Yeah. He just, he just scores goals. He's one of them. He plays on the shoulder, running behind. If you want goals, he, he's, he's got it. Yeah. You know, he, he put it up to his feet and try and hold it. He'll be the first to admit that's not his game. Yeah. But anything in behind, on the shoulder, in and around the box, he just boom, bang, and he'll score. So I mean, he's a goal scorer. You know, unbelievable. Yeah. And he's, he's he's had a good non-league career. Brilliant. So obviously, just quickly on yourself before we go into some quick fire questions to yeah. finish. Um, obviously, 39 now. How many years do you reckon you've got left? Do you know what I keep saying? I keep saying, oh, it's the last one, it's the last one. I'm not going to put a year on it, at the time frame yeah. on it, I think. I think I'm just going to, I'm just going to see how my body goes. goes. Yeah. I think, I think it will be, I don't think it will be my fitness, because I'm a fit, I'm fit. Yeah, yeah. We did running the other day at, at Rosso, and I'm, you do all right. me, me and, me and Ross Anna, he's 36, I'm 39, and we're well, doing runs. the yo-yo test. I think we, I finished third. In the earlier test, he finished second. So fitness is is good. Yeah. It's just whether like me, my shoulder goes or my knee goes, yeah. or I just lose the love of it. So I'm not. I'm, I think you're a long time retired. So I'm not. I'm. I'm gonna definitely. I want to do the season, and then I'm gonna take it from there. Just see year by year. I think. So you mentioned as well that you've got into the coaching side of it. Is that something that you definitely want to do when you're hanging up? Do you want to get straight into coaching? I, I think so. I had a, I was, I was assistant manager at Frickley, so I, I, when I left Buxton, I, I was playing at Buxton, I was captain, and then Martin McIntosh, who was the previous manager at Buxton, rang me up and said, look, I want you to become and be player assistant manager, and I thought, Do you know what, I was 36 then maybe, 37, and I thought, 
this is an opportunity I couldn't turn down. I, it was, I went there and really enjoyed it. Um, I think when you're playing, you probably couldn't yeah. be assistant manager as much as I would if I wasn't playing. But I, I really got a taste for it, and it didn't last too long. I ended up leaving, and then I went to Grantham as as player coach. Yeah, yeah. Um, so I had a little bit of a input in that, and it is something I want to do. And if it's not, it's not non-league football, yeah. uh, first team men's football. I, probably do some kind of form of coaching, uh, academy coach, academy coach or or like something like that, yeah, because yeah. I think, you know, I've got a lot to give and got knowledge and I enjoy, I enjoy it more than anything, if I didn't enjoy it, I wouldn't do it, so possibly, yeah, something, definitely. something I definitely want to go into, I think, yeah. Brilliant, so I've got some quick fire questions for right. you just to finish, we've only got four, right, so, first one, favourite football boot, old school or new type? Oh, do you know what? I'm a, I am a night man, so I've always wore at night, but my always. Favorite, oh, oh, other than when I was a YTS. And this, this so my favourite boot isn't Nike. I've worn Nike for 20 yeah. years. The first, but you know the old Adidas Predator, yeah, 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 where yeah. kind of like the white and it comes down the side. I yeah. don't know which version it is. You'd have to, go, but it's like all comes down there. The big tongue, and you used to. I remember going to the, get the tongue and put the big yeah. tongue and whip it right over yeah, the top. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So that Adidas Predator is my favourite, if not total Nike. Definitely. Yeah. How long did you wear that Predator one then for? A couple of seasons. A couple of seasons, yeah. A couple of seasons, but I, 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 after that, I didn't go back to. Adidas. That's have always been night because I think I'm actually a bit narrow. My feet are a bit fat. Yeah. <laughs> so I'm a night man, but my favourite boot is uh, that Adidas Predator. Brilliant. So best banter in change room in your career. Oh, best banter. There's a there's a, a goalkeeper I used to play with at uh, Buxton called um, Phil Barnes. Yeah. Mate, funny kid, he's a goalkeeper, but he's yeah. lost half a finger. Yeah. <laughs> that's the tell you open up. So he's yeah. diving. But he's, he was just like dry witted, stupid, yeah, yeah, yeah. unbelievable. Another one, another another one local to Donny's uh, Brad Grayson. He got a bit of banter. He's, yeah. Oh mate, yeah, he? he's not. Yeah, he's, he's like, he's, yeah, he's, <laughs> he's, mate, he's nuts. He he's is funny. He's a liability at time, but in terms of not in a, not in a bad way, yeah. but he's, he's a funny kid. Like, yeah. Yeah, he's I know Brad. He's a funny stuff. kid. Yeah. He's a funny kid. Uh, next one. So, do you know Slacky, Liam Slack? Yeah, yeah. Is it true Liam Slack has played over 500 non-league games? Good player or not? Oh, he's a good player. I don't know if he's played over 500. <laughs> Claims he has. Maybe. Claims he has. Maybe. He's a good player, yeah. yeah. So growing up, he obviously he's good mates with some of my mates when we were younger. But yeah, very good player. Well, I don't, I don't know. Has he played five hundred? He, he, well, he claims he's played um, in four continents, five continents. Oh, I mean, say how old is he now? A year younger than me, I think. Is he? I think he's a year younger than me. Thirty eight, is he? Maybe. Yeah, he came out of retirement. I remember. Well, I did come out of time. He's still playing now for form. Yeah, yeah. He played for a, like the reserves at form last year, and he came on and had a worldie one yeah. game. And he said, "Nah, I'm not saying I'm, I'm not hanging him up now." So he's still, he's still <laughs> here and there. He still likes still to playing. think he's there. That's it. You get the love bite. You get a couple of. Yeah, yeah. It's good. You never lose it. It's just the legs that go. I think rather yeah, yeah, than yeah, yeah, yeah. the technical ability. Yeah. So final one. So obviously, you can say best moment in football in your career so far. <sighs> I think probably making me. Making my league debut uh, for Grimsby in the Championship. I think looking back, that was probably the biggest one. Playing in front of like, I think it was. In fact, we were playing H Hallam the other week and they, um, last season, and they were all their fans were giving me a load of stick. Yeah. I was playing well at the yeah. time. Like, oh, what's it? Because they they yeah, have decent yeah. crowds at our level. What's it like playing in front of a crowd? And I turn around. Not thirty thousand, is it? Yeah. Not thirty thousand here. When I've played it, played thirty thousand yeah. in championship, they were like, "Oh!" Yeah. They googled it, and then they obviously googled who I was by then, and they yeah. said it won't thirty thousand. It's twenty four thousand. So, uh, but I think probably making my league debut for for Grimsby at Reading. The other one was probably my Halifax. That gets that league, the, yeah. yeah, getting so close to football league. I mean, had we done it, that would have been it. Um, and the other one was getting called up for the England non-league. So yeah. that, that's really? actually, yeah, I got called up for that. When I was at Halifax that year, we got into the yeah. player final. Like I say I had a really good season. Got called up to England on league team. Brilliant. So I've enjoyed that, young. I think we've yeah. waffled on for ages. And uh, I can talk, mate. Can I? <laughs> yeah, I can as well. To be fair, <laughs> but. Um, Apart from that technical issue we had at the start where the camera were rolling for about five, ten minutes and I, and I looked and thought, oh no, the mic ain't even on. <laughs> like, I, I, like, I've always dumber and dumber I were on here. School, mate, yeah. don't change, does it? Yeah. But I appreciate you coming on, mate. I've enjoyed no that. Um, brilliant. Um, like I said, 
stories as well. The Vardy one and the Gaza one's amazing, yeah. isn't it? Yeah, it's good, mate. It's good. But, uh, you re- looking back, you think, you know what, they're the good players you've yeah. played against, and you know, I've enjoyed the majority of ups and downs over the 24 years, but uh, yeah, really good uh, yeah. Uh, to share that with some of you. Brilliant. So, uh, thanks for everyone, obviously, watching. Um, that's the <coughs> second episode we we Youngy. Um, obviously, like, subscribe for um, for more content coming. Um, next week, we've actually got Joe Leasley. Oh, good yeah. Player. So, um, Very Joe Leasley will be joining us on the next episode. Um, thanks again, Youngy. Appreciate you coming in. Appreciate the time. Obviously, um, teaching now as well. So, teaching, so we've yeah. got a busy schedule, but I appreciate your, your time coming on, mate. I do appreciate it. Um, but yeah, um, see you all next week. Cheers. Cheers, mate.